let's quickly go on to God's word this morning. Shall we turn our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 44? And we read verses 1 to 5. Isaiah chapter 44, verses 1 to 5. But now listen, O Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what the Lord says. He who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you. Do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant, Jeshur, and whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. They will spring up like grass in a meadow, like poplar trees by flowing streams. One will say, I belong to the Lord. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. Still another will, will write on his hand the Lord's and will take the name Israel. Now, this is an amazing portion of scripture that we find where the prophet Isaiah is speaking to the people of Israel. And while he speaks to them, he gives them a clear instruction or a clear prophetic word um, talking to them about the future of their lives. What God has in store for their future. Now, every one of us, we all love to know what is going to happen in our future. There's nobody in this world who does not like to know what will happen tomorrow. <laughs> That's why you see astrologers and all those kinds of people, you know, flourishing and making good business because the palmistry and all of these things that you see down the street with a parrot trying to say what, uh, it'll pick something and, it'll, and they interpret it and say what's going to happen. Why all of this? Because people want to know what will happen to them. But beyond what the parrot down the street knows, or what the palmistry can predict, um, or probably even if my, he might be able to predict something, we have a God who is in control of everything that happens in our future. He ordains everything. He pre-plans everything. And that's exactly the story that we heard this morning uh, as Kevin was sharing the testimony of how everything fell into place at the right time. And um, you see how God is speaking to the people of Israel about what he has in store for them in the future. He's talking about the descendants to come. He's talking about the offspring, which is obviously talking about the days ahead. And uh, you see that as he speaks through the prophet and as he's speaking to the people of Israel, the people of Israel have failed God many times. This is the background. This is the situation. They go away from him. They stray into idolatry. They very often do the practices of the cultures uh, in the neighboring nations, whatever is practiced there. They, they begin to adapt to that. They begin to leave the word of God. They begin to leave the instructions of God. They, uh, they bring a disgrace to the name of God. And God is angry with them and very often he would banish them into captivity or he would allow an uh, enemy kingdom to come and take possession of them or come and attack them. Or probably sometimes it would be a famine, a drought or a plague or something might come and destroy many of their lives. All that he was doing so that the people would somehow come back to him. And uh, here you see that God is building up this great expectation of his people. Not giving a false hope but revealing his plan for their future. He's working it out for the generations to come. You see our God is a God who is not just a God of the now, but he's also the God of the future. He sees through several generations. He sees through several, uh, you know, peoples that are going to be born and he knows everything ahead of time. He's working it out and as Israel is called to come back and God is reaching out to them by raising up a high level of expectation in their minds about what he is about to do for them, He's calling them to return back. That's one of the ways that he's, in other words, literally alluring them to come back to him, to be in fellowship with him, in relationship with him. Because very often the relationship was severed. And you see here in verses 1 to 5, the passage we read, the first couple of verses we see God is speaking to the people of Israel, calling them, O Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what the Lord says. He who made you, formed you in the womb 
and who will help you don't be afraid o jacob my son jeshur and whom i have chosen the one who forms us in the womb and, and jacob and israel are his people he's calling them as his chosen and his servant uh, primarily he's basically going back to the covenant that he made with abraham he's talking about the covenant that he made with abraham isaac and jacob and calling them to be a people of his own to be a chosen people so that in uh, in them he will reveal his glory into their lives he will uh, you know show his majesty and his power and uh, through them to the nations of the world and so he goes back to call uh, recall the uh, the covenant that he made with them the promises he gave them telling them that you are my people you are my chosen people taking full ownership of them because they were acting like they were strangers to god they were acting like they were enemies of god that's why the bible says while we were enemies of god god came to us jesus died for us hallelujah amen that's how the, we were behaving that's how the people of israel were behaving as if they were strangers to god but god is calling them and saying that they are his you know and he takes possession or he takes ownership of them he becomes very possessive of them this is the way in fact actually man should be appealing to god and saying god you gave me all of these promises i am your co- we are your covenant people and i am your child and so come to me come to help me and i want to be with you you know uh, bless me this is how a child of god must be going to god but here you see god coming to man you know taking on this appeal of going back to the covenant and the ownership that he the promises that he gave them and saying you know i am the one who chose you you are mine you are my chosen people you are and you are my servants and you know jacob israel don't be afraid i am here to help you he's coming to them reaching out to them in spite of they straying away from them and you see the love of god here that's the first thing that we look at you know as we talking about um uh, the master and his plan there's a master plan that he has and the master has his plan and we're talking about that in this whole passage and we see the love of god uh, number one god's love for us now we all know at a superficial level oh yes god loves us god loves everybody god loves the whole world god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life we know that god is love in his very nature uh, you know as his a uh, character is love we know who he is as uh, the one who gives love and he pours out his love into the hearts of people we see all of that we know all of that now it's one thing to know it but totally another thing to absolutely experience it in reality and you see that here see it here um he tells them don't be afraid because you are you know Uh, you are mine you are my chosen people and he takes this appeal back saying i am i have chosen you i formed you in the womb and you are my servant jeshur and whom i have chosen he's going back to the chosenness the choice that he made over their lives the covenant that he made with them the promise he gave to them and this is who our god is it's amazing in fact the way that we should be appealing to god god comes appealing to us we should be appealing to god saying lord you chose me lord you are my god we should be running to him and saying god i need your help i am afraid but he comes to his children and he's and out of love he says appealing to the covenant that he made with them appealing to the choice that he made on, on their lives that you are mine you are my chosen people and he comes to them um and instead of putting an end to their lives because of their sin instead of calling off the covenant and calling off the promises and instead of leaving them in the hands of the captors and instead of banishing them forever he goes back to remember that he has chosen his people they are his hallelujah even though they have disobeyed him again and again he goes back and says you are mine hallelujah which which person on this on the face of this earth will ever do that who will ever do that well somebody has done things that are against us we will only say oh it's better that i don't have anything to do with them you know because they've repeatedly done things that have hurt us that have harmed us repeatedly spoken things or done things that have you know gone against our expectations or desires or what we've told them to do and and at some point sometimes we give up on some relationships and we say oh it's better that you know i even don't have these kind of people in my life that's how we see some 
unfortunately some families even break up because it becomes it comes to a point where they are not able to tolerate it anymore they are not able to put up with it anymore they are not able to bear up under it anymore and so they give up on it but our god is not a god who gives up on us that's his true love hallelujah hallelujah to do good to somebody who has done good to us is no big deal but to continue to be good to someone who has never done anything good who is not worth our goodness is a big deal hallelujah are you with me this morning amen that's who our god is even though we have not done good and we have not fared enough you know to be worthy of him of his love and please him but yet he loves us that's true love that is divine love that is a that is a love of god that's the difference between man's love and god's love hallelujah and so we see how god loves his people so he tells them don't be afraid because you are his chosen people and so you and i can always fall back on his love how far you might go away from god whatever by be the things that you might do to displease god how many ever times you might have broken the command of god and the teachings of scriptures you might have blown it off 